Thomas Midgley Jr. was an American engineer and chemist born in 1889. Initially, in the 1920s, Midgley sought to make the most popular refrigerants of the time safer. Eventually, he discovered chlorofluorocarbon. This substance was considered highly suitable for use in refrigeration systems, such as air conditioners and refrigerators. It was considered very safe to use in air-conditioned environments, with almost no risk of explosion. At the time, this discovery was seen as a major success. However, years later, scientists discovered that chlorofluorocarbons damaged the ozone layer. This revealed that Midgley's invention had actually led to major environmental problems. Secondly, Midgley's perhaps most famous invention was leaded gasoline. In the 1920s, he developed the idea of adding lead to gasoline to improve the efficiency of gasoline engines. This helped engines run more smoothly and played a significant role in the growth of the automobile industry. However, years later, the harmful effects of lead on health and the environment were revealed. Today, leaded gasoline is no longer used, and this invention has become highly controversial over time. So, how did Midgley die? Midgley was quite ill in his later years due to polio, and he had difficulty moving. One day, to make it easier to move in bed, he invented a mechanical device that allowed him to move more freely. However, here is the ironic part. The device's cords somehow got tangled, and Midgley became entangled in the cords. As a result, he strangled himself and died. In other words, he died because of the device he once invented. Midgley's life was truly tragic and ironic. His inventions, which initially seemed to provide great benefits, ended up causing significant harm to the environment and human health in the long term. While Midgley went down in history for his inventions, his life also left a valuable lesson for the scientific world. Inventions, if not made responsibly, can bring about many negative consequences. William Bullock was an American inventor born in 1813. He made a significant invention in the world of printing. In 1863, he invented the web printing press. The web printing press revolutionized the printing industry. At that time, printing newspapers or magazines required each page to be manually set individually. Bullock's invention allowed printing to be done using a roll of paper, meaning the paper continuously moved through a machine, making the printing process much faster and more efficient. This really changed the printing world rapidly. Newspapers could now be printed much more quickly, and the work became much easier. However, Bullock's life ended in a rather tragic way. In 1867, while repairing the machine he had invented, he had a serious accident. He got caught in the moving parts of the machine and was severely injured in his leg. At that time, infections were particularly dangerous due to the limited medical treatments available. Bullock developed an infection in the leg he had injured and a few days later, he died from blood poisoning. Otto Lilienthal was a German engineer born in 1848 and is one of the most important figures in the history of aviation. He was the person who took the first real steps toward human flight. In the late 1800s, he developed a great passion for flying and began conducting research in this field. Using the scientific knowledge of his time, Lilienthal invented gliders. A glider, which is a flying vehicle without an engine, was actually one of the first flying machines. With these vehicles, Lilienthal was able to truly fly, using air currents to stay aloft. Lilienthal had a profound understanding of wing inclination and flight aerodynamics to make these flights. He knew exactly how to control the wind during flight and which movements to make to control his flight. 
he became the first person in history to truly fly. At the time, since there were not many flights, Lilienthal's flights were considered one of the greatest achievements of that era. However, Lilienthal's life ended in a tragic way. In 1896, during one of his flights, he lost his balance due to the wind's effect while flying a glider, falling from a great height and suffering serious injuries. He sustained severe damage to his spine and died a few days later, on August 24, 1896. At that time, aviation was still a very new field, and Lilienthal had taken great risks to ensure flight safety. After Lilienthal's death, his research and flight experiments held a significant place in the world of aviation. Later aviation pioneers, like the Wright brothers, were greatly influenced by Lilienthal's work and followed in his footsteps to achieve powered flight. Lilienthal, as the first person to discover the ways of flight, remains an inspiration for all aviation-related work done today. Alexander Bogdanov was a Russian scientist and doctor born in 1873. He made significant contributions both in the field of medicine and philosophy. However, perhaps the thing that made him most famous were his studies on blood transfusion. Bogdanov was particularly obsessed with delaying aging and staying young. At that time, very little was known about blood transfusion in the scientific community. However, Bogdanov believed that transferring blood from young people to an older person could improve that person's health and possibly stop aging. In other words, taking blood from young individuals seemed like a solution to prevent aging. Because of this, he conducted numerous experiments taking blood from young people and transfusing it into himself. However, in 1928, he mistakenly received incompatible blood during one of his experiments. He transfused blood from a person whose body was not compatible with his own, which led to a major disaster. Due to blood incompatibility, a severe infection developed leading to blood poisoning, sepsis. Ultimately, he died within a few days. Henry Smolinski was an American engineer and inventor born in 1933. Smolinski was actually working on one of the first real examples of flying cars. In other words, he wanted to transform a regular car into a flying vehicle. In the 1970s, by combining automobile and aircraft technologies, he designed a flying car called the Aero Car. This car actually resembled a normal car, but it had wings at the rear that could be extended for flight. When the wings were deployed, the car could take off like an airplane and travel through the sky. Smolinski envisioned that this invention would allow people to travel much faster and make intercity transportation easier. However, Smolinski's life ended in a very tragic way. In 1973, during a test flight of the aero car, the wings malfunctioned and the vehicle lost balance in the air and crashed. As a result of this accident, Smolinski lost his life. In other words, Smolinski's death occurred during the tests of the flying car he had invented. These kinds of tests, especially when the technology is very new, unfortunately can be fatal. However, Smolinski's invention was an important step in showing how flying cars might play a role in future transportation. Even today, the concept of flying cars is still a topic of research and development. Max Valier was a German engineer and scientist born in 1895. He made significant contributions to rocket technology and space research. In the early 1920s, he began working on rocket technologies and conducted experiments with solid fuel rocket engines. At that time, space travel was still a distant dream, 
but Valio was taking real steps in this area. Through theoretical work on the use of rockets, he laid the groundwork for making space travel possible. In other words, Valier's invention helped lay the foundations of rocket technology. He conducted numerous tests and experiments to ensure that solid fuel rocket engines could be used seriously for the first time. At that time, such rocket engines were very dangerous and were a new field that needed to be tested. Max Valier made significant contributions to space research by working in this area. However, in 1930, unfortunately, these efforts cost him dearly. While testing rocket engines, one of the engines exploded and he was fatally injured. The explosion during the test gave him serious injuries and he passed away a few hours later. Horace Hundley was an engineer and submarine designer born in 1823 in the United States. In the 19th century, he developed an idea that could revolutionize naval warfare, the submarine. During the Civil War, Hundley decided to build a submarine to fight for the Confederate States in the conflict between the North and the South. Hundley, together with a group of engineers, embarked on a fascinating project using the technology of the time, the CSS Hunley. This submarine was a war vessel powered entirely by hand and could travel underwater. The CSS Hunley was a vessel that could be operated by only eight people. Hunley's goal was to approach enemy ships stealthily and launch attacks on them. In 1863, this submarine carried out its first successful attack, torpedoing and sinking the Union ship USS Housatonic. This was the first successful wartime attack carried out by a submarine in history. However, unfortunately, Hunley did not live to see this success. In 1863, during a test of the submarine, the CSS Hunley began to sink. Hunley was inside the submarine for a final test and, tragically, lost his life along with the other crew members as the submarine sank. His death became a great tragedy in history as he passed away without seeing his invention being successfully used. Hunley's death was a historically significant turning point. The achievements of the CSS Hunley and Hunley's tragic death had a significant impact on the development of submarine technology. Although Hunley did not live to introduce his invention to the world, he became a key figure in history as the person who laid the foundations of submarine technology. Carol Suchek was a Czech-born Canadian extreme athlete and diver born in 1947. However, one of the things he is most famous for is his high fall stunt in a water barrel. Carol would enter a water barrel and fall from a high place with the goal of surviving the fall and landing safely. With this dangerous stunt, Carol gained significant fame and even earned a place in the Guinness World Records. This stunt was considered an extreme sport because, before entering the barrel, there was always the risk that the fall could have fatal consequences. However, Carol turned this risk into a performance and successfully executed it. Unfortunately, in 1985, Carol's final stunt ended tragically. That year, Carol Suchek was performing his full stunt from a water tower inside the barrel. But this time, things didn't go as planned. As the barrel hit the water, Carol's head struck the ground violently causing a serious head injury. As a result of this accident, Carol lost his life. The unfortunate accident during the performance led to his death. Following Carol Suchek's death, the risks of dangerous stunts in extreme sports began to receive more attention. His stunt became a symbol of both courage and great risk. Even though Carol had survived before, this dangerous stunt showed just how fatal it could ultimately be.